Okay, so this is the actual reaction process and setup for the nitrotoluene. Um, the first thing I should probably go over here, I will show you guys this. Uh, the, these are the stoichiometric amounts of the reactants that you will need. As you see, there are only three reactants here. We have sulfuric acid, toluene, and we have azeotropic nitric acid. Uh, so the nitric acid, you can use a higher concentration if you have it. It's not necessary, however, and if you do so, you'll just have to adjust the stoichiometry. Um, if you don't adjust the stoichiometry, it's not an issue. Uh, just keep in mind that you will be using um, uh, excess of the HNO3. So uh, I am going to, after I am done with this and I separate the product from the waste products, which are going to be the acids, I am going to distill the acid so that I can recover all of my HNO3 that was not consumed in this reaction, which should be uh, minimal because these are pretty dead nut stoichiometric amounts here. Uh, however, I do want to strip any of the water out of my azeotropic uh, H2SO4 because that's, you know, pretty precious and rather expensive. Uh, so, uh, these are our three reactants. There's the ratios. Um, the toluene in this instance uh, is going to... Uh, Ah, uh, never mind. I, I, that doesn't even matter. I forget that I started to say anything. So, uh, so this is the basic setup we need for it. I have a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. You could get away with like a 300 milliliter one. Um, I just like to have the excess 500 milliliters in case we have uh, any unexpected boiling that goes on that keeps everything from foaming up and, and going up into where we don't want it to go up into. Uh, this is in a glass dish because it is going to have an ice bath surrounding it. Uh, to start off, I'm just going to use some crushed ice with a nice little sprinkling of sodium chloride atop it. And uh, eventually, as the acids start to get uh, almost all the way in, I will probably add some uh, cold water as well um, just to uh, make a little bit more efficient of a cooling apparatus. So uh, you need a three neck flask to perform this reaction and that is because you need the one neck here. I have a digital thermocouple going into there and as you can see here we are at 0.3 degrees Celsius and temperature control is extremely extremely paramount with this reaction you do want to try to keep it around 15 that's 15 degrees Celsius if at all possible uh, however you will have the temperature climb especially as your mixed acids are starting to uh, react with everything uh, and so I would say as a good baseline, as for your maximum temp, do not let it rise above 20 C. If it starts to go above 20 C at all, you need to immediately turn off your stopcock on your addition funnel, stop the addition of acids, chuck in um, as much more water as you can. Uh, but keep in mind, though, um, uh, you don't want to throw any ice on top of the glass because uh, if the solution is 20 C it, that means that the glass will be 20 C and if you throw ice on top of it it should not happen but you do risk cracking your glassware via thermic shock so just keep that in mind okay so you see that I have a uh, reflux condenser over on the side here and I'm just using a 20 centimeter or 200 millimeter whatever you want to call it Allen condenser for this and this is necessary because uh, toluene uh, as far as an organic compound goes is not highly volatile 
uh, and sulfuric acid is non-volatile. However, the HNO3 is highly volatile, and as you heat it up, um, it is going to get more volatile. Now, we are not using any external heating here, and that is because this is a very exothermic reaction, hence the ice bath. So the heat energy that is produced just by the reaction itself will be more than sufficient to hit 15 degrees to 20 degrees Celsius. So keep that in mind. And then up here we have our pressure equalizing addition funnel and this contains my mixed acids. Um, they are all in there and obviously when you mix the two acids together they warm up somewhat. Uh, so this is just warm to the touch and what I'm going to do is allow it to cool down um, to around 5 degrees C which should not be any problem because it is about 20 degrees C right now outside. Uh, and I'm going to do that before I start the addition of the acids. Uh, this is partially why I do not have any ice in my ice bath right now. Um, and that is just because I am waiting for my acids to come down to temperature before I start the addition. And so I don't want my ice to be melting away and virtually cooling nothing but a little bit of the toluene uh, as I'm waiting for my acids to cool. So, uh, anybody that has ever made uh, just straight nitro benzene before, um, this reaction is virtually identical to that. Uh, toluene, after all, is simply benzene with a methyl group attached to it. Um, so that being said, we, uh, the addition rate of our mixed acids needs to be extremely slow. I recommend a drop every 5 to 10 seconds. And if you go even slower, that's fine. The reason for this is because the exotherm will not occur immediately. And even if it did, there is a lag between what the actual temperature of our solution is and the sensitivity of our thermocouple, meaning that our solution could go to 20C and our thermocouple is still reading that it is 15C. Uh, there should not be that big of a gap. I'm just using that um, as an example. So you want to add the acids extremely slowly. Um, it should take you roughly two hours to add all of your mixed acids safely. Okay. So once you get all of the mixed acids in, and again, I am just stirring this. You can see here I've got a stir bar in there, and it is imperative that you use very strong stirring for this. If you don't, what is going to happen is your acids are going to come in and they're going to partially nitrate the toluene and then because of the density variance they're going to separate into a biphasic solution um, and then what's going to happen is if you uh, start to stir that more strongly than what you were stirring it already you are going to get an enormous temperature spike and that obviously is not a good thing when you are nitrating any type of organic, when you're nitrating anything, you do not want extreme fluctuations in temperature, but especially when nitrating organics, uh, because there is always the risk of spontaneous combustion. So, uh, as I said, keep your acid addition very slow. It should take you roughly two hours. After the addition of all your acids, uh, some literature that I have read on this recommends stirring for another 30 minutes. However, I stir mine for an extra hour. So that's what I would recommend. And that is just ensuring that all of the, basically the nitric acid has reacted with the toluene. Our sulfuric acid is basically in there uh, just as a drying agent. Uh, so uh, 
you know, I guess that's kind of just a, a side tangent there, but the extra stirring is going to ensure that all of your nitric has fully reacted with the toluene. And that brings me back to what I was saying at the beginning about when you go to recover your acids out of this, uh, if you do, which I recommend because azeotropic sulfuric is pretty expensive and azeotropic nitric is even more expensive. Uh, when you go to distill it, as long as you have stoichiometric ratios here, you should not really get very much if any of your nitric back off uh, you should only get water and then your 98 percent sulfuric acid so that's all there is to the reaction for making your nitrotoluene be safe hope you enjoyed as always please like and subscribe if you would like to help me produce more of these videos it is highly unnecessary, but it is always welcome to uh, become one of my patrons on my Patreon account. There is a link to my Patreon account in the description. Uh, if you want to donate 50 cents, $5, $50, again, it's not necessary, but it would be greatly appreciated. As chemicals and glassware are expensive and uh, it just helps me to be able to keep producing these videos uh, to keep doing them in a timely manner uh, meaning that I can get more videos out faster if I have the funds to do so um, so just keep that in mind some food for thought again it's not necessary I do this for fun and to educate all of my viewers However, it would be greatly appreciated. So, this was the synthesis of nitrotoluene. If you try this at home, please heed all my warnings. Be careful and have fun.